For a small pub built in the sticks of Brisbane, 1865 was a big year. All around the world, history was being made. Across the globe, the American Civil War was finally coming to an end. Back home in Australia, the bakery that would become Arnott's Biscuits opened. So too, about eight miles out of Brisbane, another icon in the making began to welcome its first customers. In 145 years, the place has gone by a few different names. But what you all know now as the Glen is proud to be one of a handful of continuously trading premises in the state. So if you like your heritage served icy cold, pull up a chair and relax. You're amongst friends. Friends like these. Some might call them barflies. Um, oh, Glen was a bit of a landmark for we country people as we came to town, so we had uh, the occasional stop coming through as a young fellow when I probably shouldn't have been in here having a drink, but <coughs> we did. Every Friday there would be about 16 of us. Um, we'd get here about 3, finish here about 6.30. I remember that we had the big log fire there going, and uh, I, was, I was always the woodman, and I'd come in and I'd throw wood in there and it'd blazing it in the winter. It was beautiful. But anyway, I got a call down from management there one day. Don, you're spending too much money on our wood. You've got to cut it out. And keeping a watchful eye on the bar flies were the barmaids. There used a barmaid here called Big Red. She was here for about 20 years. And then Faye. Now, Faye was here for a good 20 years. And Faye used to... We used to sell raffles here for the football club every Saturday afternoon. And Faye didn't mind doing the barrel and pulling the numbers out, but Faye always won the last raffle. <laughs> There's nothing like a good story. And the Fitzgibbons family have been hearing them across the bar, this bar, for more than 50 years. That's a lot of stories. But here's one you might not have heard before while kicking back at the Glen. Their story. to go up and down uh, to the Gold Coast. We used to come down the hill past this old pub on the right hand side and it was ramshackle, it was multi-colours, it was a uh, terrible looking place. And um, lo and behold, Dad told us that he had bought this hotel. So we were, we were all mortified that uh, he reassured us he was going to rebuild it and, uh, and make it into a nice pub and we we're all gonna move in there one day. Brian, along with his brother Vince and his sister Imelda, gave the Glen its first Fitzgibbons facelift. Well, it was a responsibility for me when, when we first got it, when we first got the Glen, to, to expand it and make it work. The beginning of the place at the Glen, it was really uh, an experiment for me. I hadn't done it before, so I was experimenting and trying things. It was an experiment that involved Brian's family, all 11 of them. So your bedroom was over there, mine was up here. Um, Brian, John, Anne, Greg, Judy, me, yeah, well, Donna, <laughs> Mark, Sandy, <laughs> Mum, Dad. There's a stack of us. So. Yeah, it was good though, it was a lot of fun. My room was the second one from the left and I shared that with my sister Donna. And um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, some uh, fun times in there. Well, there was 11 of us living upstairs and we were supposed to have house guests. <laughs> and one day the licensing commission rang to say they're coming down to check the rooms. So I had to put everything out of there like dolls and toys under the beds and take them all to the park. <laughs> yeah, we had treat houses down the back. Um, we had a couple of beauties actually, a place to hide your cigarettes and stuff, you know, away from mum and dad. And we had, I remember one that we had that was built of corrugated iron and old bits of timber and stuff and it used to hang out over the water of the, of the creek down the back there. And uh, yeah, we used to spend nights in that. It was good fun. We had a paddock at the back there, which was a football field come cricket pitch. Um, where the dad used to organise um, woodchop carnivals and um, there was always something going on. During the 60s, the Glen transformed into an entertainment mecca. 
what was once a Cobb & Co chain station, was fast becoming the hotspot in Brisbane. We were always trying to wrangle around how we could actually get to see the bands. It wasn't about drinking alcohol, it was about just being on the premises to see the entertainment. Apart from being home to Brisbane's first disco, the Glen also hosted legendary Australian acts like Billy Thorpe, Kamal, Daddy Cool, The Deltones, and the wild one himself, Johnny O'Keefe. Oh, he's a great bloke, a great bloke. Yeah. Great to meet. Vibrant. Just like you'd imagine him. The one person that stands out in my mind was Johnny Farnham. He just released his song Sadie the Cleaning Lady. So Dad allowed us, the two of us, to have a small table in the cabaret room set up very close to the servery so that the staff could keep an eye on us. And we sat there with our pink lemonades and watched Johnny Farnham. And uh, after he performed, we were taken backstage to meet him. So that was a, a big thing in a 13-year-old's life. I'd be working, so they would all sit out on the roof of the hotel and watch the concert. Because in those days, a lot of the shows were open air. In the old cabaret room, um, there was this big exhaust fan. It was a big, huge tunnel with a fan in it that used to suck all the smoke and air out of the room. We used to sit up on top of the roof and peer down through that through that uh, tunnel to watch the, what was going on. It was always good fun. Um, it's a young bloke seeing a, sort of a lady dancing on the stage or something was like eye-popping for me. Going to a good uh, uh, Catholic boys' school, uh, I had some tales to tell my mates, I can tell you. We always promoted a good time and it worked. Everybody that came to the Glen loved it, and it just never faded. To an outsider, living in a pub sounds like fun. They were good kids, but like kids. They, they were normal kids, <laughs> getting into mischief. Whenever Dad was away, uh, then we sort of had free licence to scoot down the back and, you know, do your wheelies and create havoc down there. But you'd always end up getting caught out, but it uh, didn't seem to stop us. Remember the, remember the night one of the um, boys, they're in the bath and they overflowed the water and it came down? We'd fill up the bath and then something like Gilligan's Island would come on and we'd be totally absorbed in watching Gilligan's Island and forget that the bath was running. And next minute you'd hear stomp, 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 stomp up the stairs. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Brian comes racing upstairs. And some poor customer sitting at the lounge bar having his nice quiet beer, <laughs> looking up, water coming through into his drink. So that, that didn't go down well, but it happened regularly. It, we never learnt. We never learnt. No, well, I used to think Dad was Mr Forex, you know, the little Forex emblem. I just thought that was him, you know, because we just... <laughs> He grew up in the hotels. Or the, Dr. Fitz, they used to call him, because you know, he dispensed medicine, you know, keep people going. He was tough, but fair at the same time. Yeah, it was pretty tough growing up in a pub. Yeah, we were all expected to contribute and work, and uh, there was no such a thing as a day off. One job I remember, it was, it, it was having to help the kitchen staff make chicken bread rolls. <laughs> To, which was sold in the bottle shop and the public bar and yeah, chicken and salad rolls most Saturday mornings. And I remember the staff used to always say to us, put plenty of salt on, it makes the drinkers drink more beer. <laughs> Worst job. Cleaning the toilets with uh, steel wool, the urinals, the men's urinals, polishing them with steel wool for hours. And, and Dad would come in and inspect and say, still not shiny enough. And uh, Probably the toilets, I'd say. <laughs> After a Friday night in the public bar, the toilets went, didn't look too good. <laughs> Block sewage lines, putting your arm right down through sewage lines to pull out the obstructions and stuff. I mean, uh, that's probably got to take the cake, I guess. Ugh, not nice at all. In 50 years, the Glen's gone through many changes, but there's been one constant. We're very proud of it. I mean, it's, it's a great achievement to have something in, the, in, a, in a family for, uh, what are we now, four generations. It just doesn't happen today. So you have a, a strong sense of 
duty almost to uh, to to want to continue the family tradition. Very rare to find a, a family that's involved in the same business, especially the same premises, for that period of time. Fifty years is a big achievement. I've got uh, two younger daughters, and one of them says that she's going to run the Glen one day, and I say, well, good on you. So, what is the Glen's secret? The, the capital that have been employed and the blood and the, the sweat and the tears that have gone into this place from the, all the team uh, have, have, have turned it into a, a beautiful pub. And we've got the whole package here and I think that's what makes this hotel feel really special. It's just this uniqueness about the Glen. I mean, you, you couldn't replace this sort of venue now in the way it is. It's timeless. Uh, it just oozes atmosphere. I mean, they really are entrepreneurs in what they do. Um, they have a passion and a real vision for this hospitality industry and it shows because they've grown up all their life through this sort of game. And I think the secret is just you know, hard work and being aware of your customer needs, being aware of trend changes and constantly reinventing yourself. I don't think it's going to stop. I mean, um, here today they're building more things. Every time I turn around here, he's, uh, the boys are doing something, something different. Uh, I think it's a great position. The, the city's finally caught up with it and it's, it's a great pub. Um, it's got a lot of heritage, a lot of water under the bridge across the road here and uh, um, it is an icon pub. Yep, the iconic Glen Hotel and the Fitzgibbons family. Not a bad story, huh? Filled with plenty of good characters and only 50 years in the making. Fantastic, I just think it's fantastic how you are celebrating your 50th anniversary. I would just like to wish them all the best and hope they continue on the good work they're doing, you know, for the neighbourhood. Oh, happy 50th. Keep up the good work. Look, I'd just like to congratulate them on having such a wonderful hotel here. Just congratulations on 50 years. Yeah. Yeah.